Hello and welcome to OH3 SPN. Uh, one of the repeated myths about the ICOM 7300, and in fact, most of the ICOM radios, is that they do not work with dynamic microphones. Uh, I'm a huge fan of dynamic mics. I like them because they don't pick up too much of the, the surrounding room noise. I, I like the whole, everything about dynamic mics, so I tend to stick with them. And a number of years ago on my blog, I wrote, uh, well, I did a review of, of a, a Chord DM01, and I compared this to a much more expensive Samson Q7, and I, I think I have some recordings on on my blog. Yes, I do. Of the two mics, just showing the difference between a, a cheap karaoke-style eBay special Chinese, whatever you want to call it, mic, and a quality microphone, and sometimes the results are not what you expect. Uh, I found consistently that the cheap karaoke throwaway mics sound better on the radio than the more expensive. And I know this may go against the opinions of a lot of people, but <laughs> I've demonstrated time and time again that just because you spend a lot of money on a quality microphone that sounds great on stage or in the recording studio, it doesn't necessarily translate well to the squashed limited bandwidth audio of amateur radio. So anyway, I have tried, I'm currently using a uh, AKG, currently using a, a reasonable quality AKG dynamic mic to record podcasts, YouTube videos, but I'm still... I'm still using the Chord DM01 for amateur radio use because uh, everything I try, just nothing beats it. And this was a was it a twenty pound mic or fifteen fifteen pound plus five pound delivery from China or something? It was ridiculously cheap. So this this video is a comparison between a dynamic mic, which everyone tells you does not work on the Icom seventy three hundred. And the fist mic that everyone tells you is is phenomenal, and you can't better it, really. Personally, I really don't like fist mics. It just, yeah, I, I like to have my hands free. So what I'll do here is I'll 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 include a couple of photos here of the, the two mics I'm talking about and how I've got it set up on the boom stand. And I'll cut here to a recording. This was captured on Hack Green SDR on the 40 meter band. Uh, from here in Finland to Hack Green in the UK. And I've got some additional screenshots as well of the mic settings. The mic settings on the radio are pretty similar. Uh, the only significant difference is the mic gain. For the hand mic, I think a mic gain of about 30 to 40 setting is, is reasonable. For the dynamic mic, yes, it is lower output. You do need to push this to 100 which is is not a bad thing. It's at the high end of the scale. But listen to the recordings. Listen to this recording. I'll try and switch between the two several times so you can you can compare equally, and then tell me what you think. Testing, testing, testing. Audio. Icom seventy three hundred and a dynamic desk mic. Oscar Hotel Three, Sierra Papa November. Testing audio. Testing audio. Oscar Hotel 3, Sierra, Papa November. The supplied microphone that came with the ICOM 7300. Oscar Hotel 3, Sierra, Papa November. And a dynamic desk mic. Microphone that came with the ICOM 7300. And a dynamic desk mic. Microphone that came with the ICOM 7300. Oscar Hotel 3, Sierra, Papa November. Oscar Hotel 3, Sierra, Papa November. Oscar Hotel 3, Sierra, Papa November. So, welcome back. What did you think? I mean, I, I think as great as the, the, the hand mic sounds, and it can be improved by changing the settings. I must say there's no EQ settings on the radio change. This is just stock settings. The hand mic will sound better with possibly a bit less compression um, and fine-tuning things, but as I say, the radio is set up for the, the dynamic mic. So it's perhaps not a completely equal comparison, but even so, I think the dynamic mic just sounds so, so much better. 
The Chord DM01 is the mic I'm using. I think that's now been replaced by the Chord DM02, which is available on eBay, amongst other places. I guess it's a very similar sounding mic. But I mean, any any dynamic mic will work. I just prefer for radio use. I've done a number of tests and I consistently prefer the 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 Chord DM01. Uh, the only other thing to mention is I'm using a cable. I've previously made my own adapter and this is something I need to look into. But on, on this occasion, I was lazy. I moved to Finland. I didn't have all my tools. I only recently bought some decent soldering equipment. So I just wanted something ready made. And Technofix in the UK make this cable for the ICOM 8 pin round connector with an XLR. It says for Hale. Heil, Hale, Heil microphones, but really it's any any three pin XLR mic. I should also add here that uh, in addition to the the adapter cable and the mic, uh, you have to have a, a PTT switch. So this this is what I'm currently using. This is a, a very amateurish DIY job. I've got a, a a push to talk button. I also have a toggle switch. So if I'm on a bit of a rant. <laughs> I can I can toggle the PTT switch. I can take my hands off the desk. I can sit back in my chair, enjoy a glass of whiskey whilst talking, uh, and I I don't have to worry about holding a button down for my my five minute rant. Not that I rant, but that's the idea. Uh, so yeah, it's nice to have the flexibility. Some people prefer foot switches. I found the foot switch a little bit awkward. It it was difficult to use. It would move around on the floor. I'd push it to engage it, I'd then push it to disengage it and it wouldn't disengage. So there'd be 20 seconds of, of me frustrated trying to disengage the PTT. It, maybe my model was just bad, but it didn't work well for me. I much prefer a desktop PTT and PTT latch. I don't know if there's commercial options available. There probably is, but they're so simple to make. It's just, yeah, it's easy to do yourself. Uh, the thing I'm not sure about is when I've made my own adapters previously, uh, I think it may even be on my my blog. I'll have to check. I'll check in a minute if it's on my blog. But I've used, to go from a balanced XLR mic, I've used the one-to-one -one audio transformer. So it's got the balanced input on one side and it's got the output with one side pulled to ground on the other. I've always assumed this would give me more... Uh, higher voltage essentially because you've got the opposite and opposing balanced signals going into the transformer the output you have one side grounded so i thought that the 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 maximum swing on the output would be twice that as if you were just taking half of the xlr signal but i don't know the more i think about this the more i'm confusing myself maybe you can tell me if you're converting a balanced to an unbalanced mic do you need essentially a ballon? Uh, obviously you do in terms of signal uh, noise rejection on that cable, but does it make a difference on the, the voltage measured on the output if you're only taking half of the XLR signal and tying the other half immediately to ground, or if you're doing it through a transformer and then tying the output half to ground so that, yeah, to, to me, in my head, it feels like there should be a higher voltage swing using the transformer. But I, I haven't tested this, and it's something I periodically think about and, and never do much to, to test. But yeah, what do you think? That all I wanted to do is prove, really, that the ICOM 7300 does work with a dynamic mic, and I think it works very well with a dynamic mic. So yeah, don't be put off. If you're into dynamic mics, and you want to buy the 7300 or you already have a 7300 and you're thinking about whether it's worth making up an adapter, yes, I think it's worth it. Don't believe all the rumours you hear online and hopefully this test has proven it. Thank you very much. This is Steve, OH3SPN. And until next time, 73s.